Chapter Nineteen of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Nineteen, in which Kate brings Claude joyful news. On Saturday at noon, Rob Collins presented himself at the tent with two letters which he had brought from the village that morning. One was for Claude, the other for Willie claude ran his eye over the note then jumped into the air and knocked his heels together three times after which he turned a back handspring kate's coming out this afternoon and she's going to stay over sunday with mrs collins on making this announcement he twirled about and spun himself round and round till he fell through dizziness willie meantime was spelling out a card which he had taken from its envelope what is this word frank he asked going over to elmwood frank took the card ran his eyes over it and then laughed so heartily as to bring the whole crowd to his side listen boys he said it's too good sodality of ananias office of the irreverend director july eighteen eighty dash brother william hardy at a yearly handing in of reports it was discovered that you were equipped above all milwaukee boys for beating the record of ananias whereupon you were honorably elected a member of the ananias company with the privilege of having your statements of a more interesting character printed at our office for nothing yours it's an actual fact willie looked puzzled who was ananias frank he was a man who died very suddenly my young friend when he was making the same kind of an endeavor as you generally make to tell the truth willie asked a great many questions and on the whole seemed to be flattered by the notice taken of him by the ananias society it's no use trying to play a joke on him said dockery in an aside to pearson i lost half an hour writing that note not that kind of a joke anyhow returned charlie i really believe if a society of liars did exist willie would pay hard money to become a member this statement reached willie's ears he smiled sweetly and surveyed himself in his pocket looking-glass i dare not attempt to describe the joyful meeting between kate and claude at the station that afternoon what love beamed in their faces as after the first salutation they gazed long and earnestly into each other's innocent eyes i have said that claude was in the habit of going to bed with the sun on this day he departed from his custom and the silver spray fell from his oar as he rowed kate about the lake upon whose bosom rested the witchery of the moonlight claude had much to tell that evening of his tumbles and childish escapes and he had a sympathetic listener he related to kate several things that i have not ventured to set down claude's temper had got the better of him several times and i have not had the heart to picture him in his worst moments kate in her turn had much to tell best of all she brought word from their father that claude was to make his first communion on the coming fifteenth of august a great joy came over claude's face at the announcement which suddenly changed to an expression of fear oh kate it seems so near and i've been forgetting it's not a bit too near claude said kate firmly you need the grace of the sacrament to strengthen you if you do your best god will do the rest and then to inspire confidence into her brother she went on to tell him how saint francis de sales one of the sweetest characters of history had naturally been of high temper yet aided by grace had come to a reach of meekness that was almost unbelievable it was near midnight when kate and claude before parting for the night knelt together in the house of mr collins and with a new fervour said their night prayers not forgetting to petition god most earnestly to dispose the little heart for the great day but claude and kate did not know the future 
the fifteenth of august was not the time that god had appointed end of chapter nineteen